Welcome back guys. Last time we looked at how to create brush based entities and specifically the funk wall entity and we saw what would happen uh, with lighting, how lighting affects the brush based entities and after publishing that video I thought about this a little bit more and I think best decision so that the light cast the shadow is we'll keep this a brush but since this is touching the face we're going to make that a funk wall so how we do that is control T Funk wall, we'll let it be. That's all set with that. Same with this one. Actually, what I'll do for this one is we'll actually place it against the against the ceiling. And then we can make that an entity. That's pretty boring. So let's look at what we can actually do that's significant with the funk wall. And we're going to make a rail. We're going to look at masked textures. And a masked texture is, again, anything that has this blue section. So if we type in the open bracket, we'll see, we'll see like a rail for, like this red rail, for example. And when we put it in game, we want the blue section to disappear. So we'll start making a rail here. I'm zooming into this portion of this second level and we'll start drawing out our rail here. Oops. Make sure you have the block selected and where our primitive is block. Okay, now we can draw it. Okay. I'm going to press Control E to zoom in on my creation. There we go. Okay, bring it down. And that should be enough. Oh, okay. Make it a little taller. All right, I think that is 64 units. Don't quote me on that. Uh, you'll notice though, when we actually put it into the level, it's uh, the blue section appears black. And let's get this top part to align. So we're going to use the same texture, but I want it to be I want it to be this top part of the rail to appear across here. So what we're going to do is click onto here, onto the surface, and just rotate 90 degrees. And then I'm going to do a line right, a line left. There we go. You need it to be a left align. Okay. And then from there, we can zoom in and make this a bit more thinner. And that should be enough. Actually, I don't think that's the line the way we want to. So we're going to move it 90 degrees and right. Okay, that's better. Okay, perfect. That's our rail. Okay, and let's also go ahead and set this to a wall. Okay, we got it as a wall. I used control T. Wall was default. What we need to do for this is set render mode, solid, and FX amount is going to be 255. And there we go. Okay. So let's figure out. I think we can make this see through with this. So you'll want to make sure that this icon is enabled. Toggle transparency of entities with non standard rendered mode in 3D. That's what that is. And as you can see, this is how it's going to look in game. There are a little bit of artifacts here, but we're not going to worry about that. So we can continue with this and uh, rail off this whole area. So I think the best way to do that is we're just going to copy this. Let's raise the grid one bit. Okay. Copy. We have our texture lock enabled. So it's no matter where I move it, wherever I move the block, it the texture stays aligned. So let's rotate that. Okay, and we'll stretch it up. Where a bit of the craftiness comes in is what we'll have to do with this corner to make it look decent. So what we can do is use our clipping tool and we're going to cut off that side. Make sure the red is to the left, the part that we want to clip. And it looks like that. So we'll do the same with this side.
clip that, and then we'll marry them together. With the arrow keys, I'm nudging down, and there we go. Now you see it's a little weird there. That looks okay, that looks a little weird. And so we have some options to, for that, but we're gonna, we're gonna ignore that for now. Well, okay, what we'll have to do, so if I were to move this out of the way, you see how this is a this texture is aligned there? So let's see if we can do the same thing there. So I'm gonna click on just this face and go left. Okay, so it's a little skinnier, so let's see why. Okay, so we'll have to do, so this one's Align World, we want it to be, we want the other one to be Align World. And then hit left, and that's good enough. So we'll move that back into place. And then now if we look from that side, it look, the, the post appears on either side that you're looking. That's good enough. And like I said, we'll explore some better ways to do that. Um, so let's keep going around the line here. So what I'll do, I'm gonna click till I get click onto the thing until I get my yellow stretch. Move it up, and that should keep this side unaffected, which it is, so that's good. And we'll use our clipping tool one more time, making sure the red's on the part that we want to cut, and enter to cut. And let's do the same that we did here. Click on that face, world, left. Okay, and this shouldn't take much longer. We're going to do a long one across there. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, and we're working with the small primitives in a large space, so you're going to have to zoom in and out. But I'm going to copy and paste, and rotate. Okay, and then I'm going to use the clipping tool and go the other way with that. And then once we learn about vertex manipulation, uh, we'll be able to use that instead of the clipping tool, but we'll save that for another day. World, left. Move that over to touch that side, and that should be looking good. And then let's bring that down here. So zoom out. Click, use the selection tool, click, click onto the primitive till we get the yellow handle to the left for our stretch. And it's got to go off screen a little bit. I can zoom out like that. There we go, right there at the corner. Okay. And we'll fix this side here, world, and left. Okay, so let's do this. Now we have, what is that, three rails here. And we have one. only one of them is set as, well, actually, they're all set as walls, but we need to, what I want to do is combine them. I don't think we need three separate entities. So we're going to create one entity out of the three blocks. So I'm going to do control T and we're going to get this message here. It says multiple entities are selected. Please pick the one you want to keep. So it's going to merge them. Okay. And now we can close out, keeps the properties, but it's one entity. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to go all the way around, and what we can do to make it easier on ourselves is I'm going to hold down shift and drag, and I've created a second one. And then I want to go to tools, flip vertically, and it's going to be vertical in respect to the 2D view that I had it selected, which was the top. So it does that. Perfect, now we have a mirror image. And it looks good. So we can put one final bit in to close it off.
well, instead of building it, I'm going to hit escape. We're going to, let's do, let's grab one of these. I'm going to turn on this um, ignore grouping like we did before. And I'm just going to grab one, oops, I got ignore grouping on. I'm going to grab, grab one part of it. And I'm going to uh, use shift again to clone. And now it's abandoned its properties as the, uh, as an entity, so that's okay. And then rotate it, put it in place. Let's zoom in, okay. And it should be good, okay. Perfect, it's perfect size, okay. So we don't have to stretch it anymore. Now I'm gonna, now we ha should have two entities, I think. Yeah, one, oh, we have turn off, turn off the ignore grouping, okay. One, two entities, and then this, a non-entity brush here, and I'm going to make them one, one entity. So Control T, it gives us our options of the funk walls that are available, and I selected that. Now it's combined, and there we have a pretty decent rail. Um, we can go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. Uh, we could eventually clean this up, uh, how the rail is like that, uh, really close. Something we could probably do is if we were to select that and do center, that will evenly space these out so we can see that it looks a little better there. We could probably do that to all of them. Center. And then we can actually select multiple uh, faces at once. Center. I mean, that's okay. Maybe we don't want to do it to there. But I'll let you guys handle that however you want. It'll be your map, and you create it how you like. Okay, so now we can run the map. Hit OK. Uh, you won't get this message. Do you want to export? So I'll just say no. And there we go. We have our shadow from the light. Sorry, I can't help picking, picking up all these weapons. Um, let's see. Didn't exactly do what I wanted to with the uh, rail, but we'll have to figure out why. The corners. But that's a good start. I think the reason why we couldn't see the rail there before is because they were all the same entity. So if let's test and see what it looks like if we separate them out. And I think the easiest way to do that is we're going to go back to world and just we're going to set them individually as walls. Oops, didn't mean to grab the floor there. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so set that one to wall, 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 and there we go. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual entities. Now I can select them all and do all enter to open up the properties for all seven at once. Now whatever changes I make will apply to all of them. So let's do solid, 255, and run the map. Okay, and you can see now we have that rail there. And that looks a lot better. But that's a good start. And that is how you make walls with mass textures.